text, uh, chapter 83, Draupadi meets the queens of Krishna. There were a good many visitors who came to see uh, Krishna, and amongst them there were the Pandavas headed by King Yudhishthi. So Lord Krishna, after talking with the gopis and bestowing upon them uh, the greatest benediction, he came to welcome uh, King Yudhishthi and other relatives who came to see him. First of all, he inquired from them about their auspicity. But the fact is, whoever sees the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, there is no question of inauspicity. But still, as a matter of etiquette, when Lord Krishna inquired from King Yudhishthi about his welfare, he became very much gladdened by such reception and began to uh, address Lord Krishna as follows within quotation. My dear Lord Krishna, the great personalities and devotees in full Krishna consciousness always think of your lotus feet and they remain fully satisfied by drinking such nectarine of transcendental bliss. Nectarine which they constantly drink sometimes comes out from their mouth to be sprinkled for others in the shape of duration of your the transcendental activity. Such sprinkling of nectarine is so powerful that if somebody is fortunate enough to have the opportunity to drink such a nectarine emanating from the mouth of a devotee, immediately one becomes freed from the continuous journey of birth and death. Actually, our material existence is due to our forgetfulness about your personality, but fortunately, if one is privileged to hear about your glories, immediately the darkness of forgetfulness is dissipated. Therefore, my dear Lord, anyone who is constantly engaged in hearing about your glorious activities, there is the possibility of his inauspicity. As we are fully surrendered unto you, and we have no other a shelter than your lotus feet, we are always confident of our auspicity, always. And or not, you are the ocean of unlimited knowledge and transcendental bliss. The resultant action of mental concoction existing in three phases of awakening, sleeping, and deep sleep cannot exist in Krishna consciousness. All such reactions are invalidated even from a distant place. You are the ultimate destination of all liberated persons. Out of your independent will only, you have descended on this earth by the use of your own internal potency, Yoga Maya. And in order to re-establish the Vedic principles of life, you have assumed just like an ordinary human being. As such, there cannot be any inauspicity for one who has fully surrendered unto you. Quotation close. Next paragraph. When Lord Krishna was busy meeting various kinds of visitors and they were engaged uh, in offering prayers to the Lord, the female members of the two dynasties, namely, the Kuru dynasty and the Jodhu dynasty took the opportunity of meeting with one another and be engaged to talk in the topics of Lord Krishna's transcendental pastimes. First inquiry was made by Drupadi to the wives of Lord Krishna. She addressed them as follows within quotation. My dear Rukmini, Bhadra, Jamavati, Sattavati, Tattavhama, Kalindi, Trivya, Lakshmana, Rahini, and all others, the wives of Lord Krishna, will you please uh, let us know how Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, accepted you as his wife, and how did he marry you just in pursuance of the marriage ceremony of ordinary human beings. 
Prussian cloth net runner. Upon this first apart, chief of the queens, Rukmini Devi, replied as follows, within quotation, My dear Draupadi, it was practically a settled fact that all the princes, like uh, Jarasandha, Nadas, wanted me to be married with King Shishupala. And as usual, all the princes present during the marriage ceremony were prepared with their armor and weapons to fight with any rival to stop the marriage with Susupa. But the Supreme Personality of Godhead kidnapped me in such a way as if a lion takes away a lamb from the flocks. This was not, however, a very wonderful act for Lord Krishna because anyone who claims to be very great hero or king within this world all subordinate to the lotus feet of the Lord. All the kings touch their helmet on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And as Drupadi, it is my eternal desire that life after life I may be engaged in the service of Lord Krishna. He is the reservoir of all pleasure and beauty. This is my only desire and ambition of life. Present club. Next fire. After this, Sattva began to speak as follows. Within quotation. My dear Draupadi, my father was very much afflicted on the death of his brother Prasen, and he falsely accused Lord Krishna for killing his brother Prasen. This was in connection with the Samantha jewel, which was actually taken by Jambuvan after killing Prasen. Lord Krishna, in order to unblemish his pure character, he fought with Jambuvan and rescued the Samantha's jewel, which was later on delivered to my father. My father was very much ashamed and sorry for accusing Lord Krishna in the matter of his brother's death. Now, after getting back the Samantha's jewel, he thought it wise to rectify his mistake. So, without waiting any further, although he gave words to others for my marriage, he submitted the jewel and myself under the lotus feet of Krishna. Thus I became his pet servant, accepted as wife. Etc. After this, Jambamuthi replied as follows. Adya Draupadi, when Lord Krishna attacked his father Jambuvan, the king of Rikha, my father had no information that Lord Krishna is his former master, Lord Ramachandra, husband of Sita. Without knowing the identification of Lord Krishna, my father remained engaged in fighting with him continually for 27 days. After this period, when he became too much tired and felt fatigued, he could understand that he could not be defeated by anyone else except Lord Ramachandra. Thus, he concluded Lord Krishna was the same Lord Ramachandra. He thus came to his senses and immediately he returned the Samantak jewel. And along with the jewel, in order to satisfy the Lord, he presented me to become his wife. This way, I was married to the Lord. That's my desire to remain life after life as the servitor of Krishna was fulfilled. Protection clause. Next paragraph. After this, Kalindi began to say as follows. And then Draupadi, I was engaged in great austerity and penances in order to get Lord Krishna as my husband. When Lord Krishna became aware of this fact, he very kindly came to me along with his friend Arjun and accepted me as his wife. But Krishna then took me away from the bank of Jamuna. And since then, I am engaged in the house of Lord Krishna as the sweeper. And the Lord is treating me as his wife. Put some clothes. After this, Chitravinda said as follows. In quotation, My dear Draupadi, there was a great assembly of princes because of my Chambara ceremony. But Krishna was also present 
in that meeting, and he accepted me as a maid servant by defeating all the princes present there. He immediately took me away from that place to Dwarka, exactly like the lion takes away his seer from the groups of the dogs. When I was thus taken away by Lord Krishna, my brothers wanted to fight with him. Later on, they were also defeated. Thus, my desire to become life after life, the main servant of Krishna, became fulfilled. Quotation clause. After this, Satya began to address Draupadi as follows. Dear Draupadi, my father arranged for an assembly for my Swamba. He is in bracket personally selecting husband and in order to test the strength and heroism of the bridegroom, my father kept them ferocious bulls with sharp and long horns, and the prospective bridegroom was to fight with them. Many heroic prospective bridegrooms tried to defeat the bulls. Unfortunately, they were severely struck. All of them, being almost invalid, returned home, frustrated. When Lord Sri Krishna came, and he fought with the bulls, it was just like a plaything for him. Very easily he captured the bulls and each one of them roped by their nostrils. Thus they came under his control exactly just, just like small kiddies of goats comes under the control of the children very easily. My father became very much pleased. Then he pompously married me with Lord Krishna, giving in dowry four divisions of soldiers, horses, chariots, and elephants, along with hundreds of maid servants. Thus Lord Krishna brought me in his capital city, Dwarka. On the way back, he was also checked by many combatant princes, but Lord Krishna defeated all of them. Thus I have got the privilege of serving his lotus feet as a maid servant. Present clause, next paragraph. After this, Bhadra began to speak as follows. Dear Dhrupadi, Lord Krishna is the son of my maternal uncle. Fortunately, I began attracted at his lotus feet. When my father understood these feelings of mine, he personally arranged for my marriage with Lord Krishna, inviting him and giving him in dowry one division of Okhoyani army, along with many maid servants, father, royal paraphernalia. I do not know whether I shall be able to have the shelter of Lord Krishna life after life, but still I pray to the Lord that wherever Buddha continued to say, my dear Rupadiji, I always pray that I do not mind wherever I may take my birth, I only wish that I may not forget my relationship with the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Quotation clause, next paragraph. Then Lakshmana began to say, in quotation, my dear queen, I have heard many times the great sage Narada glorifying the pastimes of Lord Krishna. By hearing him, I became attracted to the lotus feet of Krishna when I heard that the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, was also attracted to the lotus feet of Krishna. Since then, I was always thinking of him, and thus my attraction for him increased. My dear king, my father was very much affectionate to me when he understood that I have been attracted to Krishna then he devised a plan like this. My father devised a plan exactly like your father devised the plan of piercing the eyes of the fish during the time of your Sambara. The only difference between the fishes to be pierced in your Sambara and my Sambara was that in your case the fish was hanging on the ceiling open to be seen, but in my case, the fish was covered, and it was to be seen only by the reflection 
our feet on the water down. That was the special feature of my samara. And the news of this device was spread all over the world, and the princess thought of it at that time, all of them from all directions, being fully equipped with armor and guided by their military instructors. All of them arrived in the capital city of my father, each one of them maintaining the desire to get me as his wife. One after another raised the bow, which was left there for piercing the fish along with the arrow. Out of them, uh, many could not even join the string between the two ends of the bow, and thus, without attempting to pierce the fish, they simply uh, kept the bow as it is and came, came back. Some of them, with great difficulty, uh, drew the string from one end to another, but were unable to tie with the other end, and being dashed by the spring-like bow, they fell down. And their queen will be surprised to know that in that Sambara meeting, there were many famous kings and heroes present. Some of them were uh, like uh, Jarasandha, Ammastha, Shishupa, Bhimshan, Durjadha, Karna. These heroes, of course, uh, they were able to cling over the bow, but they could not pierce the feast because it was covered and they could not trace out from the reflection where the feast is situated. After this, uh, the celebrated hero of the Pandavas, namely uh, Arjun, could see the uh, shadow, reflection of the fish on the water, and could trace out where the fish is. And with great caution, he threw the arrow also, but still he could not pierce the fish at the right spot. Of course, his arrow touched the fish. In other words, he alone proved himself better than all other princes. Yes, sir. When all the princes thus became disappointed and baffled in their attempts, and some of them left the place without any attempt, then at last Lord Krishna took up the bow, and he was able to tie up the string on the bow very easily, just like a child plays with the toys. He took the arrow, and just seeing once only the reflection of the fish on the water through the arrow, and immediately the fish was pierced, and it fell down. This victory of Lord Krishna was effected just at noon when the auspicious moment called Ovidhi was passing on according to astronomical uh, calculation. At that time, all over the world, there was vibration of joy, joy, all over the world. And in the sky, there was sounds of drums beaten by the denizens of heaven. Great demigods become overwhelmed with joy, and they began to shower flowers on the earth. At that time, I entered the arena of competition, and while I was walking in, the ankle bells on my legs were sounding very melodiously. I was very much nicely dressed with new silken garments, and nice flowers were pushed into the bunch of my hair, and because I was in ecstatic joy, because of Lord's victory, I was smiling very pleasingly. I was carrying golden necklace bedecked with jewels in my hands, on account of its uh, nice setup, it was glittering like anything at intervals. At that time, uh, because my curling hair were hanging on my face. And due to the reflection of various rings, my face was representing a specific bright luster. When I reached the Lord, first of all, I saw with the blinking of my eyes were all the princes present there. And very slowly, I placed the golden necklace on the neck of my Lord. And as I have already informed you that from the very beginning, my mind was attracted by Lord Krishna. At that time, I considered such 
garlanding the Lord as my great victory. As soon as I had placed my garland on the net of the Lord, immediately there was tumultuous sound by the combined beating of Mridanga, Pakhavat, corn cells, drums, kettle drums, etc., and the experts, uh, artists in dancing, both male and female, began to dance symmetrically with music, and the singers present there began to sing very sweetly. Next time, my dear Dorvati, just after this function, when I accepted Lord Krishna as my worshipable husband, and he also accepted me as his maid servant, immediately there was a tumultuous roaring amongst the disappointed princess. All of them became very much agitated because of their lusty desire. But without caring for them, my husband, the 400 Nara, immediately boarded me on his chariot, which was being drawn by first-class four horse horses, and expecting opposition from the princess, he immediately armored himself properly, took his bow of the name Sangha, but our uh, celebrated uh, driver of the chariot, namely Daruka, without waiting for a moment, immediately drove the beautiful chariot directly towards Dwarka city. In the presence of all the princes, thus I was carried very quickly, exactly as the lion carries its share of a deer from the flocks of deer. Some of the princes have wanted to resist our progress and thus equipped with proper weapons, they wanted to oppose exactly like the dogs try to oppose the progressive march of a lion. At that time, arrows released through the Sangha bow of Lord Krishna, but some of their left hands, some of their legs, and some of them lost their head from the body. Some of them lost their life there for good, and some of them fled from the battlefield. Next word. After this, the Supreme Personality of Godhead entered his most celebrated city, Dwarka, during all over the universe. And when the Lord was entering the city, he appeared to be like the shining sun. On that occasion, the whole Dwarka city was profusely decorated. There were so many flags and festoons and gates all over the city so that the sunshine on that day could not enter Dwarka. As I have already told you that my father was very much affectionate to me, and when he saw that my desire was fulfilled in getting Lord Krishna as my husband in great happiness, he began to distribute various kinds of gifts to friends and relatives, such as valuable dresses, ornaments, bedsteads, fitting carpets, and various similar gifts. Lord Krishna is always self-sufficient. Still, my father, out of his own accord, offered my husband various kinds of dowry, consisting of riches, soldiers, uh, elephants, chariots, horses, and many valuable and rare weapons. He presented all these to the Lord with great enthusiasm. And that when, at that time, I could guess that in my previous life, I must have had performed some wonderful past activities, the result of which, this life, I could be engaged as one of the uh, head servants in the house of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Next one. In this way, when all the principal queens of Lord Krishna finished their statement, then Rohini, as representative of the other 16,000 queens, began to narrate the incidents of their becoming wives of Krishna as follows. In Krishna, my dear queen, when Bhomasu was conquering all over the world, he collected, wherever possible, all the beautiful daughters of the kings and brought them arrested to keep 
within his palace. And this news of imprisoning us was this to Lord Krishna. He fought with Pavasot and released us. Lord Krishna uh, killed all the soldiers of Pavasot as well as him, although he had uh, no necessity to accept even one wife. Still, by your request, he married all of us, 16,000 in number. And their queen, our only qualification was that we are always thinking of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. It is the cause of releasing one from the bondage of repeated birth and death. My dear queen, Draupadi, please take it from us that we are not after any opulence like kingdom, empire, or the position of the heavenly king. We do not want to enjoy such material opulences, neither we desire to achieve the yogic perfection or the exalted post of Lord Brahma, neither do we want any of the five kinds of liberation like Sarupa, Salakva, etc. We are not at all attracted by any of these opulences. Our only ambition is that life after life we can bear the dust particles attached to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna on our head, which was desired by the goddess of fortune to keep on her breast, along with the fragrant saffron. We simply desire this dust of the lotus feet of Krishna, which are accumulated underneath his pole while traveling on the land of Vrindavan as a cow has paw. Specifically, the gopis, the cow men, and the original tribes women always desire to become the grass and straws on the street of Vrindavan to be trampled by the lotus feet of Krishna. My dear queen, we wish to remain as such, life after life, without any other desire. Production clause, next paragraph. Thus, hence, the Bhakti Vedanta part part of 83 chapter of Krishna, Draupadi meets the queens of Krishna. 